You don't need to manufacture the drama. My heart's broken. My father's dead. That, that's enough. Now listen, I, I, prided, I pride myself on, on being honest when I come out and do this. I, I, I feel the deal I've made with you over the time I've been here that I come out and talk about what's on my mind. And, and if I didn't do this, it would be shameful. So I've got to talk about this tonight. I, don't, I didn't feel right, you know, coming out and doing my usual complaining about Starbucks, you know, and there's... <laughs> but I'll be back on them tomorrow night, you know, I... <laughs> I, you know, the half-assed impression of Sean Connery will be back tomorrow. The Michael Caine will be back in space. There'll be frisky ponies and cheeky monkeys and emails and the rest of that nonsense. That'll be tomorrow night. But, uh, and tonight, and tonight will not, uh, it, it won't all be somber. Uh, my father was 75 years old. He lived a very full life. Um, he, 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 he did everything that, I, that he set out to do. And, and it's not going to be an on... We're not going to be sitting shiver all week with this. We're doing this once tonight and we're saying goodbye. In, in my... Where I come from, there's a, a, in the Celtic tradition, it's kind of a wake. Uh, what we do is we talk about a person's life. There's a lot of drinking, usually. I, I, I won't be doing that. Um, I, <laughs> I, I think others may get involved in that. But I... Uh, well, for other obvious reasons, I, I don't do that. But, but we tell favourite stories about, about the person that's passed. And, and we... Uh, they're not always very flattering for that person either. It's not... It's kind of a roast in some, sometimes. It, it's a celebration of, of, a, of a human being with faults and, and quirks and, and all the idiosyncrasies that go with, with being a person. And my father was certainly that. He, uh, my father was born on St. Patrick's Day in 1930, um, which was a source of great pride to his Irish Catholic mother and, um, and uh, some consternation to his Scottish Protestant father, I have to tell you. And he grew up in... Uh, uh, he, he, was, he was from a poor background. He grew up in Glasgow, uh, in Scotland, during World War II. And Glasgow was, was bombed heavily during the war, and all the kids were evacuated uh, out of the cities and put to work on the farms uh, in the countryside to escape the German bombing. And it was supposed to be some kind of idyllic reprieve, but... My father's experience was more like a Dickensian workhouse. He didn't, you know, it didn't really work out well for him. And I know it was very tough for him, and he didn't talk a lot about it, but it was six years uh, when he was there that it was just awful. Uh, and, and he had a very tough childhood, and from where he started to where he ended up was a journey so incredible and vast that it, it, it's too much for me to, to hope to emulate. My father spent two years uh, in the British Army stationed in Germany. He, he worked in the post office in Scotland for 44 years. He, he, he's, he started as a telegram boy, delivering telegrams on ex-army, uh, Norton ex-army bikes, where you, you change the gear by taking your hand off the handlebars. It's called the suicide shift. Um, and, uh, you know, they were too poor to emulate Marlon Brando in the wild one with the silk scarves, so they used to wear white tea towels uh, to look like Americans. I, I've lived in America 11 years. I've never seen anybody wearing a white tea towel. But, but I'm still looking. Anyway, by the time my dad retired, he had about 600 men working for him at the Edinburgh post office uh, in, the, in the capital of Scotland. He was the chief inspector, uh, and, and he was the boss, and he went all the way up, and, and he did it through hard work. He was a Scottish nationalist, my father. He believed in an independent Scotland. He, he also uh, believed in, in this place. He believed in America. Uh, and he believed in the opportunity it, it, it offered. My father introduced me to America, literally. He brought me here when I was 13, just me and him. We went to, uh, used to get cheap fares, cheap airfares from Freddie Laker. And, uh, and I think it was like $100 or something. And, and, and we came over and we visited my father's brother, my Uncle James, who had moved to Long, Long Island. And, uh, and, and I, I've, I've talked here and, I, and I've talked lyrically often about the, you know, the summer I spent there as a teenager at 13 years old. And I, and I talked to my father about it recently and he said, where did you get the idea I get the whole summer off work? We were there three weeks. <laughs> um, but in my mind, it was a life-changing experience. It, it, you know, it, I fell in love with America then. I, I decided then to come back. Uh, and my, my father, thanks. Um, <laughs> My father, my father believed in, in hard work, uh, and, and I believe that that's how my father expressed love. That's, uh, there's something spiritual in, in, in hard work. I, I think that 
I think spirituality is not all about aromatherapy and scented candles. I think it. <laughs> I think for, for my dad, it was, about, it was about getting up early and working hard and making a better life for his kids. Uh, and that's what this man did. Um, you know, every Christmas in the post office, there's something called, there was something called the pressure. Um, it's when the mail started to build up and more and more mail and all the postal workers were, you know, um, working 12-hour shifts all, you know, all the time. It was crazy amount of work they were doing. And now I think it's called going postal. Then it was called... <laughs> And he worked his ass off the whole month of December, but every Christmas morning he would wake up with, with me and my brother and my sisters and help put the presents together. And he must have been bone tired, but he, but he did it. And he, and he never mentioned how tired he was. Um, but I think he must have been tired. My father also, he was in charge of postal workers. These are postal workers in Glasgow. They, they were tough men. They're not, you know, they're not guys who... Um, who say, I, I'm lactose intolerant, can we get soy in the cafeteria? They weren't guys like that, do it. And, and my dad was a, he's a big man, my father, and uh, he had a, a buzz cut, you know. Uh, he, he made him look like a, he had a scrubbing brush, you know, he made him look like that. And that was his nickname, he was called Big Scrubber. And the postal workers used to see me, you big scrubbers boy, you know. And so I would say, I'm little scrubber, I'm wee scrubber. But I could never really live up to that. Um, when I was broke, my dad gave me a job as a, as a temporary worker in the post office. Uh, it was in December, and it was back in the day when I was still drinking, and I got drunk, and I was an hour late for work, and my father was the boss. And I, I showed up at 5 a.m. instead of 4 a.m. It was, uh, you know, and another worker told me, your father knows you were late, and he's got a special assignment for you. And what he did was he sent me to Glasgow Airport to load mailbags onto the planes, in December, and I've never been so cold in my life. <laughs> and remember, Glasgow's on the same latitude as Moscow, and I had a terrible hangover. I, I was late because I'd been drunk. Uh, but I was never late for work again, I'll tell you that. <laughs> my father was a great whistler. Um, I don't know if that's important, but I, I, I remember it. <laughs> you could do that vibrato thing. <laughs> Fantastic. And he loved the Roadrunner cartoons. Uh, I've, I've said that here, he, it really made him laugh. I, I know, I, I don't get it either, but he loved the road on that. <laughs> he also loved the, the Tweety Bird, uh, Tweety Bird and Sylvester. He just, he loved how stupid Sylvester was. I don't know why. <laughs> I can't stupid, that bird wins all the time. That's just... <laughs> I loved watching television with my dad. He, he, uh, he had very unique <laughs> viewing habits, me and him. I, I went to a school called Cumbernauld High School. Uh, the town was Cumbernauld, where I was, and whenever nature documentaries would come on TV with, you know, monkeys all scratching each other's asses and everything, <laughs> my dad would say, oh, there's Cumbernauld High School coming out. <laughs> and I, oh, I, I don't know why it made me laugh, but it did, and, I, and he, over and over again for years, um, and when we'd watch a horror film, whenever it was a, a, a scary horror picture uh, on TV, during the tense bit where the monster was kind of round the corner or something, my dad was always, you know, say, mind your back, mind your back. And I pretended it, it didn't freak me out, but it really freaked me out when he did. <laughs> and when I, uh, when I was watching television with him, he used to, uh, I used to sit in front of him, uh, and he would sit behind me, and he'd, he'd put his hand on uh, my head. Uh, And I loved that. And he did it last week in the hospital. Probably the first time in, in 35 years or something. You know, he, from his bed, he put his hand in my head like that, and it, was, it was amazing, it was great. It was a man of few words, my dad. I, I get the talking from my mother's side of the family, but, it, <laughs> but I was never in any doubt about, about that he loved me. He, he wasn't from a generation of people that said, son, we need to talk about our feelings, you know, let's hug. He was not... He would just, my dad would just say, aye, and... But you knew, what he, you knew what he meant when he said, aye, you know. And the relationship that I had with my... that I have with my father is, uh, is not unlike the relationship I have with the old country. I, you know, with Scotland, I, I, you know, I complain about it, I grumble about it, I can, I can be mean about it sometimes, but, but, I, but I love it beyond reason. It's where I'm from, it's what I am. Um, and <clears throat> last week, uh, just as we're, we're you know, um, 
you know, we were cleaning out some stuff. To t we were going to make, you know, the room more comfortable for him when he got out of hospital. Uh, anyway, we were cleaning out some stuff, and uh, I found a letter of, well, my sister found a letter of accommodation, uh, commendation from his bosses at the post office. It seems it, 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 this thing had been written in 1961. Um, he'd had it in his pants since 1961. <laughs> About a fight had broken out in the mail trains where he used to work, and he'd stopped it. You know, he'd got in the way, and people were very grateful. It was a terrible incident. And it was, the incident was dated September 1961. Now, I was born in May 1962. So, you know, the commendation was around about the time I was conceived. And I mentioned that to my father in hospital uh, <laughs> last week. You know, I said, that was a big month. And he said, aye. <laughs> And we, uh, it's true. He was a strong man, my dad. We didn't always get along. Uh, anybody that knows me knows I've got some opinions about stuff. And, and um, you know, we, we got it straight, you know, years ago. But when I was a teenager, you know, that the night after my sister's wedding, we got into a fight. Um, well, well, not really a fight. He, he said if I stopped didn't stop being a jerk, he'd hit me and I ran away, but we were... <laughs> but I want to tell you about who he was. When I went into rehab, in the, I was in the south of England, and my parents took the bus, my mother and father took the bus all the way from Scotland to this place in England, this rehab in England, a very alien environment for them, and they sat, they came into this room in the treatment centre, and they sat, the counsellor was there, and, you know, everyone's sitting down, and we're all going to have the family talk, and my father said... He said, just before we start, everybody, uh, let me just say, Craig, I am not going to stop drinking. <laughs> and I said, all right, all right, you don't need to stop drinking. It's about me stopping drinking. Anyway, I, 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 I want to tell you something that happened last week. I was in the... My father had a mantra. He, he, he had a thing, he always used to... When I was going to the show business, he... He's, you know, my mother said, get a trade, you must get a trade, you must, you know, have something to fall back on. But my father didn't say anything like that. He just said, do a, do a job that you love. Job satisfaction. And you can be anything you want to be. As long as you have job satisfaction, you can be anything you want to be. And, and he kept repeating that. My brother and I used to tease him about it. Job satisfaction. Anything you want to be. <laughs> and we were in the hospital last week in Scotland, and my, and my father was dying, and he, know, he knew he was dying. And... Uh, and I, my son was there with me. Uh, he's four and a half. And, and my son was in, and, and he, he drew a picture from my dad of some trees and, you know, a beautiful day. And he, we put it up on the wall. And, um, and he sang my dad, you know, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Um, you know, which everybody wants to hear when they're in pain. And <laughs> it's the middle of January. And, you know, and my son sang him the whole thing. You know, you know Dasher and Dancer and, and, and the whole thing. And, you know, and he got through that. But then something happened. My son said, oh, I've got a great idea. And he went underneath uh, my dad's hospital bed. And he sang, he said, he said I'm, I'm going to sing a song. And you can't see me. For, a, for some reason, he thought that'd be very funny. Yeah? <laughs> uh, maybe I'll try it here one night. And, then, uh, <laughs> and, and he sang, just as my father was lying in my bed, my son sang a song that he picked up from one of the kids you know, all these endless kids' albums that come out. <laughs> my life's full of them. And, and my son sang this. We were sitting there with my dad and the great drama of the, of the deathbed. And my son sang, You can be anything you want to be. You can be. And I saw my dad, even in the pain, you know, something like that, and a smile crept across his face. And it, and it, was, it was fantastic. I, I miss him. You didn't know him. That's your loss. He was a great man. And uh, it's hard to say goodbye to people. It's hard to say goodbye to parents. And I, when, I, when I left my dad, we got it straight. I said goodbye to him. And I, I couldn't speak, so, I, so I, a gesture came to me, which, which I, I, I felt worked. And I, and I think he knew it as well. I, I punched my chest, and I threw him my heart. Good night, Dad.
<laughs> welcome, welcome back, everybody. Um, if you're just joining us, you know it must be serious. I'm wearing a tie. Actually, I can't stand this anymore. Um, my, uh, we're, we're doing a special show tonight because my father died at the weekend, and, um, and I can't do any cheeky monkeys tonight, but I'll, they'll be back tomorrow. Um, my first guest tonight is a good man, and he, he's a good friend of the show. He, he does me the honour of being here tonight. Uh, and I, 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 sometimes you just want your pals around uh, just to talk. Uh, Please welcome my pal, Dr. Drew Pinsky, everybody. Hey, Drew, welcome. Well, how are you? Good times, huh? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, it, there's, a, there's a phrase in Scotland, uh, lucky white heather. You know, when, when things are going really badly, uh, it's a kind of ironic it's thing. Like, uh, the, the elephant's feather. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. an elephant Dumbo, feather. Dumbo, Dumbo had a yeah, feather. Yeah, yeah. Good luck. Good luck. Is it good luck? I don't know. No. I don't know. I, I I haven't watched Dumbo in a while, but I've got a feeling I'll be watching it soon. Um, does he sing? You can be it's anything. Not that song, but yeah. a lot of songs just like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's uh, there's a I, lot of those songs. It's a very odd thing. Thanks for being here tonight. I I didn't I didn't quite know how to approach the the whole thing, like dealing with the show and um and talking about it. I, I'm not. I'm not comfortable with that. And you, you've, you've talked to a lot of people who were... My father died of cancer. He was... Yeah. Um, so, it was so, I, I got to tell you, I, it's an honor and a privilege to be here with you after such Thank a you. touching, touching, really memorial to your dad. It's a That's what it's meant to, to be. To a yeah, great thanks. man. I, and uh, all of us who've been children and had dads, I mean, just these moments that you have with him, of him touching your head and stuff, were so spectacular. Yeah, it was, it was weird in the hospital when, he, when, he, when we were, you know... He knew he was dying. He, we, were knew, we knew we were saying he's still goodbye. Your, he's still your dad. He's my dad, and I felt like a wee boy. And he used to get me out of so many scrapes. I don't know who's, who's going to get me out of scrapes. Now, if I, if I get in trouble now, I'm really in trouble. <laughs> so, now, we, we, we've sort of been touched by so much of the, the poignant aspects. Was there anything, did he ever get aggressive with you? There, there's sort of any, it's, a, it's a whole story life, you know? Is there stuff, is there... Funny stuff, negative he never, stuff. He never raised his hand to us, my dad. He was, you know, and, and in the culture I grew up in, that was, I think that was fairly unusual. I, can't, I don't know, I wasn't in anyone else's family, but I, it certainly, uh, my father never, never hit us. He, uh, he didn't have to, he kind of, <laughs> he used to say this thing, wrap it. You know, he's a wrap it up. You know, was mean. You know, was he huge? Was he? Big he was a very big presence. Yeah, yeah he was. Uh, he was six foot two, my dad. Which, in uh, Scotland, you know, in the fifties and sixties, I think probably made him, you know, Andre the Giant or right, something. Right. Yeah, <laughs> he was big man. And the Celtic's such a great breed, you know. I mean, it's just such survivors, right? I mean, that's that, that alcohol gene and the big. Oh, well, there was a bit of alcohol. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> alcohol gene is actually a woman that my father used to know. I <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> I think I've met alcohol Jean as well. I think you yeah. Yeah. Her, yes. My father, I don't think my father was an alcoholic. He drank a bit when he was younger, but, but he, didn't, he didn't have the craziness and he kept his life together and, you know, he didn't have that. There's a lot of drinking goes on over there. There'll be some done this week, I guess, as well. Did he leave directions for what he wanted, like in his gravestone or how he wanted to be? You know, I don't know the answer to that. I, mm. I, I, I'm not sure. I, I've got a feeling no. Um, because the way that, you know, we tend to approach problems in my family is kind of denial. Right. And, uh, which I think is common and, you know, and it's actually helpful, I think, a lot Sometimes. of the time. I mean, there's a lot of denial that goes into the early stages of grieving. It's like, it's, it's inconceivable that the person is gone. That's what we, my mother was saying today on the phone. We couldn't quite, You can't you know. process it. Your brain, your brain won't let you go there. And so mm -hmm. you have dreams about the person, you have visions about the person. That's when people become spiritual. I mean, I know it's right. not uh, aroma candles and whatnot, but right. people do f have ways of trying to manage what seems to be the insurmountable. Do you have a spiritual side to you? Um, I, I, th I think so. I, I don't know. I mean, uh, in a very pragmatic way, I, th I think for me, spirituality, I hope spirituality is about uh, service um, to, other and, people. to other people. I, I don't, do you, I don't do, does know. Your, do you want to wish that you you're going to be together with him again someday? I don't know. I mean, yes, that would be nice. Um, I, I, I hadn't really... It's hard to think of all that. I know that uh, some people think that you go into the light and then everybody, you know, goes to a party or, you know, or you come back again as a cow or something. And I, I actually, that would be... If my dad comes back as a cow, I would love to see that. Because that, that would be very funny, you know. And, um, but, yeah, <laughs> that's right. You call that grass? That's no grass. That's grass. <laughs> um, 
I don't know. I don't know how I feel about all of that. I, I want. I want to believe in, in so many different things, and I know are that. You, are you are jealous of people that do? Uh, yes, yeah. I'm jealous of people who have. Yeah, people that who have, have firm, firm belief that, that we will be together, and that's that. I, I'm jealous of that. I'm jealous of. I'm jealous of that kind of faith. I, I try and have faith. I try and have faith that there's some kind of, um, you know, giant plan uh, for all of this. And sometimes I think, for me, it's a little bit the way I think of. of God and life and death and stuff is, I used to think that it was, everything had a plan and everything was set out. I'm not sure I believe that. I think now it's more like jazz. It's kind of improvised. Right. You know, and... But and yet, I've, it's beautiful music. It's a beautiful... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but nobody really knows where it's going. Right. And Maybe somebody. The musicians kind of know. They, they know, but I, I think in the, in the grand scheme of things, I'm not a musician. I'm just <laughs> in the audience going, what next? What next? <laughs> right. And uh, it, it's strange because I... I don't feel he's gone. I, I mean, uh, well, he, he's a part of you. I mean, this is how people are supposed to deal with grieving: is you're supposed to take a piece of him and hold on to it. Right. And, and, and it can be painful to do that because it means also accepting the fact that he's in reality gone. Mm -hmm. And so to, to take that piece inside is to put a, really create a sort of a boundary around your life and to make a narrative out of your life of which he was an important part. Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's very. I don't remember the world without him in it. No, the and world it, has and, changed. And it never, me. it never will be without him. Right. That, that's your job is to make him alive in you. And it and it hurts. It really hurts. Oh I mean, boy. I can see it tonight. It stings. It stings so mean, bad. And, and and we, you know, and sometimes you you open by saying, you know, we didn't know your dad, but don't you feel like you know him now? We all feel like we've shared something very deep. I hope so. I hope so. Uh, that would be great. We have to take a break. We have to take a break. We'll be right back to talk to Drew, everybody. Welcome back, everybody. I'm here with Dr. Drew, and we are talking about uh, the grieving process, aren't we? Oh, fun, fun, fun. Uh, good times. Uh, yeah. Appointment television. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> so, right. Here we go. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but it, it's funny, though, that, you know, part of what I've been feeling since my dad died has, has also been maybe I should, you know, I should be more sad or, you know, I mean, I'm terribly sad for a yeah. little bit, and then I'm okay, and then I think I'm all right, and then it hits me like a freight train. And it doesn't seem to make any sense. People feel immense amounts of guilt when someone dies because oftentimes yeah. there's relief. There, um, when you, relief because somebody's been suffering or relief right. that you've been anticipating this for so long. You've sort of been dealing with the grieving for months or even years sometimes with things like cancer. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it can go on. Was, was, did you have any sense of relief with this? Um, God, I, I don't know. I would, Were you I, prepared for it? I mean, you, did you know this yes, was coming? Yes, I, I was prepared for it because... My father and I said goodbye to each other on Friday, and he died on Did Sunday. Did you believe you were saying goodbye? Yeah, I knew I was saying yeah. goodbye. I actually cried like a wee girl all the way from for about an hour after I came out of the hospital. Mm. And I have this thing that I think a lot of men have, where I don't want to show... Not only do I not want to show emotions, I'm kind of ashamed of having them. Right, you're you know, bar so, embarrassed. Yeah, I'm embarrassed, embarrassed. by it, yeah, and, and it's not cool, you know. It's and not. Although, I'm not cool anyway, but still. I was going to say that, yeah. but I just, anyway. But, but the, the thing that I think we lose track of in our culture a lot is that feelings matter. Yeah. Feelings matter a great deal. In fact, that's how we make meaning of life. I mean, really, I, do, I deal with a lot of people with death and dying, and when, you, when somebody's pressed to the mirror about what life is about, I think we and I have talked about this before, it's really always other relationships. It's other humans. And you, you say being of service, that's part of that. Right. But it's the connection with other people that gives life its meaning. I mean, that's where you get right down to it. That is what life is about. I think so. I, I always find people more, um, like when, I, when you meet people in Hollywood, I don't know if you've had this experience, you quite, you quite, a, quite a lot of people will come up and tell you how great they are. How and great they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How great you are. You know, they come up and say, I'm so great, I'm doing this, I got that, I don't really have time, uh, excuse me, I'll get right back to you, yeah, yeah. tell Spielberg no. And, and I don't really like those people. Uh, but people who come up and say, oh God, my ass hurts and I dropped my wallet over there. You kind of... <laughs> You kind of can connect with yes, someone when a, they have a vulnerability. Do you right, know what I mean? Right, it's a feeling, right? Yeah, it's, right. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, I, if, <laughs> even when your ass hurts, you can connect with somebody. Like well, hemorrhoids. I don't know if know. necessarily their ass hurts. I, I didn't but... know I was going to come out talking about hemorrhoids tonight. No, no. Would, uh, well, it, it's it's it might not be hemorrhoids. It could be a bruise or something. <laughs> What I mean is vulnerability allows you to, to communicate with someone, Absolutely. whereas coolness really doesn't. 
we live in a culture of solutions and get it done and it's all about you know feelings don't really matter it's about you know choosing to do something yeah. that's nonsense that is not what life is about life is about that that human moment i mean life is about i mean you gave me a moment before i came out here just watching you that was i mean well, powerful I mean, that that's the deal here though isn't it yeah. that we do that you know what the 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 uh the the word that i hate uh, that i hear a lot is closure you know, yeah. when people say, oh, we're going to get closure on this. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? I can't get closure on my dad being no. dead. No. I, I, what's closure for that? No. It's, it's just like... There's some things you never get over. If right. your spouse dies, a child dies, a parent dies, that, that is with you. Right. There, there's closure in the sense you had an opportunity to sort of behave in a way that finished it for you in that moment behaviorally like you were right. able to say goodbye that's a yeah, kind of and closure. i feel grateful for that but that's it's not true. like you're jettisoning your feelings that's right. not closure closure is just about a moment with a person where you sort of wrap things up but this is not this is an open book this is the this is the narrative of your life and it continues uh drew thank you so much for coming in i can't it's, tell you how well, much i appreciate it and it's, a, it's such an honor and a privilege i can't i can't tell you thanks so. man thank you so much dr drew penske everybody we'll be right back Awake for my father tonight, and part of what we do at Awake is we have some music. So tonight, uh, the, we're going to have the tribal sounds of the Scottish Highlands uh, from the latest CD, Whiskey Supper. Please welcome Wicked Tinkers, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, we're having a, a wake for my father, Robert, tonight. And, and part of that for me is uh, sometimes uh, on a night like this, I've not had many. I hope to not have many. Um, you, you just want your friends around. Uh, and so my next guest is a friend. She's a terrific actress, uh, one of the loveliest people I know. Please welcome the incandescent Amy Yazbek, everybody. <laughs> Are you emotionally exhausted yet? I am, but really? not just from the eulogy, but from life. From life? Yes. Oh, my God. It's interesting. I've put fuzz all over you, and I'm sorry. And emotionally, you've put fuzz all over me as well, yeah. <laughs> Always I don't know what that means, but, okay. it's, but it sounds kind of suggestive and... And that's the important thing. Vaguely the, flirtatious. The, sug the suggestivity must go on. I think so. I think, I think the heart goes on, as do the pants. Can I... The heart goes on one leg at a time. Comes yeah. The pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what? When you were talking to Dr. Pinsky, yeah. might I call him Drew? You can call him Drew, yeah. When He's not here. When you were talking to you Drew. You can call him Fat Ass. He's left the building. <laughs> when you were talking to Dr. Fat Ass about the. <laughs> 
about closure. About closure, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. That is the biggest. What the hell is that? I don't. Know, that's a conspiracy. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's, somebody made that up on daytime but wait, TV. But when, if something happened to you, would you want people around you to have closure? Woo! Good. That's over. No, it's like you. When somebody passes away, it's you have oh. Opener. Yeah. Not, yeah. You know, you, I well, still I know feel I, well, wait, I mean, when, to, wait, how long is it since John died? Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Right. Do I, I have closure? Not likely. Yeah. But I, I but maybe it, it means something that I, that I, that I don't understand. Right. I don't want closure. I still feel that connection and his kids still feel, still feel that connection. Right. And I'm still asking him questions depending on what you believe up there, in here, whatever, and I'm still getting answers yeah. just from the way he lived his do, life. Do you, have, do you have a belief in, in afterlife and all that kind of thing? Do you, do you no. go for all of that? Which is, which is odd that I don't. I grew up very Catholic. Yeah. And I remember which when, very Catholic as opposed to... Very Catholic is when you have actual nuns and priests in your family and, wow. and people doing this to you. and your Priests just, in your family? I did, yes. Yeah. Isn't um, that somehow, isn't that difficult? Why? Oh, I guess brothers and stuff. Yeah, I just. Oh yeah, thought... not like my dad wasn't a priest. Right. Well, that's 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 a relief. That would be very sassy. That that would be sassy. That would be very sassy. That would be and, my sassy. Mother, and my mother was a druid, and oh, it was like a Romeo druid? and Juliet. No, it's oh. all wrong. Um, you were talking about uh, you grew oh, up very beliefs. Catholic. The beliefs and well, uh... it it no, it's interesting because my daughter still is very open to that, and I don't try to tell her what to believe in heaven or but she says I, I need to believe in heaven which is very honest because some people that's the reason they do and, and who's to say not huh who's to say not to who's make? to say not right. exactly but the thing is is that again with the closure you have to kind of live every day like it's it's heaven on earth you can't be waiting for that that's the thing about heaven that bugs me well I think that, that you said something that's quite interesting the grief the um, You've, you've said a couple of things that were interesting. Let me just recap for you. No, no. I, the, little the, scrubber. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like the, you're OCD. I know. I, I um, the grief that, that, you know, feeling grief, if it wasn't for the actual grief, I, there's a kind of clarity about it that I quite like. That's you know, so that Because you just don't want to listen to anybody's bull. Okay. You know, you, isn't that crazy? Yeah. It did, first of all, there was a lot of swearing when John died. People that right. didn't usually think, hello, may I have a cup of tea? were like, no, ah, no. Nah. I mean, it was crazy because yeah. it just came out of the blue for us. It was a little bit different for you, I know, but it's Well, there still... was a lot of swearing when my father was yeah, alive. right, that's yeah. true. <laughs> but, and then there is a kind of clarity and a kind of thing where you, a very wise woman who lost her husband told me, cry, 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 go away, right. that you, no, no, please, I cry a little bit every day and I straighten ties. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Does is, that help? Well, I'll, uh, if I start straightening ties, we're in West Hollywood, I get in a lot of trouble. No, don't. Anyway. Don't just walk up to people and straighten, but I will pick lint and straighten ties. It's, okay. it's a little thing. Um, but you, that you own your own grief and people come up and they go, how you doing and how's it going and it just you don't want to give any of that away it's a real thing yeah it's yours milo is going to be very interesting and interested in the in death and life and things and he's got to see that it's okay to lose your s sometimes and just ah, if yeah. you're feeling it and it's also okay to be happy and for him to play Disney art deluxe computer game. I have knowledge of this. Our kids have the same obsession. Yeah. But I mean, to be able to lose himself, he shouldn't feel guilty for that. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think he does. I don't think he I don't think he will. It's it's hard. I, I don't know how you talk to your kids about stuff like this. But but we got to take a break and we'll okay. be right back. We'll be right back with Amy Yashbeck. <laughs> Everybody, I'm here with Emmy Yazbek. We are talking about closure and grief. Woo! -hoo. Um, where are we? No. no. Were we done with that? We talking about being having Catholics in your family? You have Catholics in your family. I do have Catholics in my How's family. How's that going for you? It's okay. You it's know, okay. I, I think Scotland is is you know we're trying to get to the other side of this Catholic Protestant thing. Okay. Um, you know. Discuss. Well, I don't know. I mean, 
I think there was, a, as far as I can tell, there's a big argument between take this, eat, this is the body of Christ, right. as opposed to take this, eat, this represents the body of Christ. Right. And, and everybody gets very this? upset about that. How yeah. about this? It's all about punctuation. Um, How about... Uh, you know we're getting in deep water already. Should actually. I yeah, not? Yeah, I don't okay, know. Okay, all right, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so how about the Longhorns winning against USC? How about that? I don't know. I, wow. That was awful. That was what? the that was, No, that was great. That was horrifying. Why? Because John went to SC and uh. I didn't finish college, so that's my pretend college. <laughs> Just because you were married to someone that went to college doesn't mean you went to college. Well, t tell them. To I've stop been married to me. two women that went to college. Oh, so you've I've got probably, a I've got a PhD. I was yeah. Say, that's very impressive. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, everybody. Hey, you don't remember this, or maybe you well, do. Well, how do you know? I, I think you don't. Okay. The first time I was on the show. I don't remember that. <laughs> And you, you gave me a card with a picture with the little girl from Easy Bake Oven on it because I was on the Easy Bake Oven, but it was the wrong one, so I made a card for you. Are you clocking my dialogue like this while I'm talking? Yeah. That's what actors do. Yeah, Bad right, actors. Right, me yeah. too. Right. Okay. So, and I put my, and I made one for you, and on it I wrote, hey, the Wicked Tinkers, they're the best in the world. Are they ever going to come on your show? They're you, fantastic. But do you don't remember that scene? I do remember oh. it because that's why they're here. Oh. No, well, the Wicked Tinkers are a, are a great band, and I, they, they are like a lot of people that I know in Glasgow who go around wearing that kind of stuff all the time. In my mind, you are a Wicked Tinker. When I think of them, I think I'm a of naughty you. tinker. I'm not a Wicked. <laughs> no Wicked Tinker. I'm just a kind of naughty... How about they came and did a, 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 a education about Scotland thing or something at my daughter's school? Really? But they just called them the Tinkers. Do you know what Tinkers were? Yeah. What are they then? The pots and pans. Tinkers. No, 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 no. Tinkers are gypsies. You're... I'm right. And it's my show. You're wrong. Oh, well, really? You're wrong, because they I'm were gypsies right. and they went around. And maybe that they're called because they went around like tinkers. Well, they're tinkers. not the same as gypsies. You know, they because don't have poop earrings. But they could make them because tinkers are tinkers. They make pots and pans and metal, and they would go from community to community and make them, also known as gypsies. But I'm right. Are and you? I'll prove it to you, yes. Google so, me. Uh, <laughs> Do you know what Google's named after? Uh, no, I'm just still thinking about Googling you. What does it, what does it mean? <laughs> Google the computer deal. I know I always do this. That's yeah, no, it's nice. I like when you do that. Google the... I don't have a manicure. You call me fast. Google, <laughs> the company is named after Google the amount, because it's a real number. Is it? Isn't it? Yeah. It is. But it's spelled G-O-O-G-O-L, and it was named by the nine-year-old nephew of the inventor who... the mathematician who invented the Google. Shut the... <laughs> Whoa. I... I... <laughs> I, well, you can, Show me your non-manicured hands, you tramp. I don't have Come on, any, what's that about? I don't have any of that. I don't have that gene. This is all just put on. This is show. all heavenly. And you are a beautiful and wonderful friend. And thank you for coming in and doing this show. I love you, baby. Yeah. Thank you. We'll be right back, everybody. Amy Yazbek. Welcome back, everybody. I want to thank my guests, Dr. Drew Pinsky, Amy Yazbek, the Wicked Tinkers. The boys and I are now going to bang a drum for my dad. Good night, everybody. Yeah.